let us continue the series of questions and answers related to self realization question number 3 is if memory is removed i will not exist so is my memory me so you can see this is in the same category of previous two questions that uh, there is a doubt here which says that if the instrument or some part of the instrument is removed then i will not exist so i'm not going to explain too much here the same arguments apply and that uh, the knowledge is stored in the memory and when the memory is removed or forgetting happens then the knowledge will also disappear the self knowledge will disappear but not the self the self or the experiencer he is simply a witness of appearance of knowledge and disappearance of knowledge appearance of memory and disappearance of memory if the whole of the memory is removed then obviously this organism will not exist it will die quickly and so no one will be left to say whether the experiencer is still there or not the ability to get any kind of evidence or proof or knowledge will disappear also so the memory does not generate the experiencer the memory generates the knowledge of the experiencer and if you cannot remove the whole memory at once you can try removing it in steps to see what happens to the experiencer and if uh, your assumption is correct slowly the ability to experience will diminish but what is actually experienced what is the direct experience if the memory is gradually removed the experience will change not the one who experiences the forgetting will show up in the behavior of the person in the speech of the person and by now a majority of events that went into the memory are already forgotten but the experiencer is still there 100% i think this was all covered in the diagnosis already and since there are many memories the question again appears that which one of the memory is critical for my existence and uh, obviously none of the memories none of the episodes stored in the memory are required for my existence i am not many i am one so the belief again is the same that uh, the knowledge of the experiencer if it is removed then the experiencer is also removed that is the belief next question is if i am a model then how will we get the proof that i will exist after that so the teaching is very clear that you do not die you are not born and in that sense you are immortal but the word immortal is not so suitable you can say you are eternal timeless eternal means not existing in time immortal probably means the body mind will exist for a long time it does not die there is a form that does not die and that will be called immortal so probably the teaching is not understood clearly you can get the knowledge that you are eternal timeless there is no birth there is no death for you you can get that knowledge right now right here what happens after the death of the body mind the instrument if when it is gone how can i verify that i am still there so the issue is who will be there to verify it if this body mind is dead gone it has become dirt and ash who will get that proof that is a bigger issue than providing the proof so whatever knowledge can be had of the experiencer you can have it now while you are alive after death of this instrument the knowledge also dies and nobody remains to get the proof but uh, that is not true for the experiencer because the experiencer is the existence so when body mind uh, is destroyed it does not affect the existence whole existence is still there and it is simply change of form nothing was really lost now we can consider the second option that suppose there is still something 
to get the proof there is another body another mind another intellect because the gross one is already destroyed if it is there then there is some possibility of knowing whether the experiencer is there and you know it by the same method of progressive elimination same rules of knowing the essence and the same uh, means of knowledge will be applied which are the direct experience and logic but uh, the funny thing is then you are not really dead if you can do all these things if there is an ability to get the proof then you cannot call it death it is still life but simply the form has changed so you will find the same proof in this second scenario also probably there is third scenario but the logic remains the same so i am worthless and deathless this knowledge can be obtained right now and you must uh, be very sure that what will die what is born that is the body mind and again the problem of knowledge that uh, if the instrument itself is gone then there won't be any knowledge there is no question of getting the evidence there is nobody to get the evidence so this is uh, probably the final form of disappearance of instrument where and the person is not satisfied with removing the memory or removing the brain or removing the body the person wants to know the death of the body mind will not cause death of the experiencer so it is possible to know right now not after death we know that the experiencer does not exist in time time is an illusion the mind exists in time the body is in time it is a changing thing so time applies there there is no time for the experiencer so what will happen to it in future is a meaningless question there is no future for the experiencer actually there is no future for the body and mind also it simply appears like this and uh, this body mind human intell- intellect cannot know what will happen tomorrow you will not know today whether the experiencer will be there tomorrow or not there is no way to find out you cannot even know any event that will happen tomorrow so it is totally beyond human capability to know what will happen after death this instrument is really limited it is tied in its own uh, illusions here the illusion is of time because it lives in time it cannot directly perceive the timeless so all that can be known is that uh, experiencer is the essence it is timeless and the concepts of change birth death destruction construction they do not apply to this experiencer that much can be known certainly 100% certainly and that is sufficient evidence so there is a belief here that it is possible to know something which will happen after death the experience of the future can be known today that is uh, imaginary idea not only we will not know about the experiencer in the way that is implied we will not know about anything at all question number 5 if i do not exist in sleep does it mean that i am changeable so this is a very common doubt almost everybody gets it that the experiencer disappears in sleep now the death is probably not a big problem you cannot experience it now but sleep is within reach you have experienced sleep every night and the assumption here is that i disappear in the sleep and that means the experiencer comes and goes that means it is changeable and if you can change it that means now everything that was said about it is completely wrong now the birth can happen the death can happen old age can happen for the experiencer if it changes the immutable character of the experiencer is very very important it is necessary to know that that is the truth it is immutable it does not disappear it does not change so what happens in the sleep just like there are other states of the mind and body sleep is simply another state waking state dreaming state sleeping state and they rotate the these states they come and go and these states are changeable who is experiencing these states obviously you the experiencer 
So it is very difficult to understand this that sleep is also an experience. If you take a look at your memory and try to recall all the these uh, times when you went to sleep, you will see that these are events in your life. However, nobody pays attention to these things. Probably they have never paid attention to their waking state also. So there is no question of paying attention to the dreaming or sleep state because there is no awareness or uh, knowledge in these states for ordinary people and even for a seeker a newcomer there is no awareness in the sleep state so the only option is to assume that the experiencer goes away in sleep but if you examine sleep if you directly observe the state of sleep you can get some hints what happens in the sleep because you are asleep you cannot watch the body but somebody else can watch it or you can record the sleep state using a camera and you can see that the body is very active it is breathing it is moving it is digesting the circulation is on everything is on even the nervous system is somewhat active the activity of the mind is perceived as dreaming it is not completely thoughtless although it is totally meaningless kind of activity not so coherent it is not like the waking state but it is active body is active mind is active what about senses so yes if the sleep is very deep the senses are almost inactive but the fact that you get up from the sleep shows that the activity was there otherwise the possible to wake up something was running in the mind in the brain in the body that changed the state from this state to waking state and yes the instruments will tell you that there is activity probably there is a lot of activity in the sleep the body is fighting the diseases the body is regenerating cell division is happening temperature is regulated so on so it is not an inactive state like many people want to believe it is full of activity yes the activity is not like your waking activity some people think that when i am sleeping i am not living my life but if you remove the sleep from your life your life will become probably very less few days only we can live only for few days without sleep because sleep is part of life it is not in activity so nothing is inactive senses are also active which can be shown by a simple alarm clock that when the alarm goes off the ears are active they hear and they start processes in the body and the mind the state changes from sleeping to waking probably abruptly you don't like it so who heard the alarm obviously experiencer was already there witnessing the sleep it witnessed the alarm sound also same way if you turn on the light bright light in the room yes the state changes the light is perceived through the eyelids who perceives the experiencer gets the final experience same way when the sun rises there is automatic change in the body state it's a natural waking up and somebody pinches you in the sleep you will get up because the body is not inactive the mind is not inactive the senses are totally active and this experience happens so that implies the presence of the experiencer now these are very very common sense uh, evidences however people don't pay attention they are very quick to assume that everything remains as it is the world the body the mind but only the experiencer disappears in the sleep and there is a reason for assuming this because somewhere in their mind they still think that the experiencer is some kind of activity some kind of process which depends on the body or the mind and so they find a state in their life where finally the experience disappears which proves that it was a process but careful observation shows that only the state changes the processes change not the experience you see the world is still there nobody will doubt it the body is still there the mind is still there and the experience is still there there is no reason for it to disappear simply because the body and mind are doing some maintenance work rest and the experiencer does not need to disappear for that so again the problem is of the knowledge that 
you do not have knowledge of the experiencer in the sleep but most of the time in the waking state also you do not have the knowledge of the experiencer before you had self realization self knowledge there was absolutely no knowledge of the experiencer even though you were completely awake in the waking you were sleeping you were dreaming but the knowledge was absent that does not imply that experiencer was absent so the sleep is a very special state nothing interesting is happening from the perspective of the mind so there is no memory of you doing anything or any experience happening or the experiencer being there and because there is no awareness also you forget the knowledge also in the sleep state along with everything else for example who you are as a person where do you live what do you do who are your parents who are your friends nothing is remembered in the sleep the knowledge of the experiencer is nothing special from the point of view of the mind and that memory is also lost in the sleep when you wake up and you happen to be a good student then probably the first thing you will recall in the morning is i am the experiencer that is a part of your awareness practice to recall who you are as many times as possible but that ability is lost in the sleep sleep is a state where most of the body mind is put on autopilot because it is seen as inactivity nobody wants to study it <laughs> it, it is considered a useless state except the highest kind of scientists people don't really study this state because nothing happens here there is no happiness here and there is no suffering here also from the point of view of the mind it is a completely boring and useless state however it is necessary to sleep for this organism so there is a memory loss which is very natural and the memory loss means a loss of memory of who you are of your own knowledge that does not automatically mean disappearance of the experiencer that is wrong logic so you can get a idea of it from the metaphor of flower and fragrance if the fragrance of the flower disappears for some reason that does not mean that flower also has disappeared probably the wind is blowing in other direction similar metaphor is given of incense stick burning of incense you know about the burning of incense from the fragrance that is in your room and for some reason if the fragrance is not there you cannot say anything about the burning of the stick yes you can assume that it is not there nothing is burning there is no incense today somebody forgot to burn the incense but that is wrong logic so in the memory of experience or the experience that is not there you should not simply assume that the experiencer or the experience itself disappeared everything is there it is very easy to prove it actually dreaming is simply part of the sleeping that is the activity of the mind and who is watching the dream yes the experiencer and they are also forgotten mostly but that does not mean that the experiencer disappeared it is existence itself or you can say for a newcomer we usually give a concession and we say that in the existence there is this ability to experience things because probably they won't understand the final conclusion that existence is the experiencer and it is experiencing itself in illusory forms that is probably too much to understand it's highly compressed form of teaching so we give some concession that look this is an ability that is inherent in the universe sometimes people don't even understand what is existence so we say universe it is already there in the fabric of the universe we use whatever words they can grasp and so it does not disappear what disappears or appears are different kinds of experiences or the memory of the these experiences because if the experiencer disappeared there is nothing in this world that can bring the experiencer back so you can understand it from your own daily experiences that you do not remember the most of the events of the past say 10 years ago but you cannot say that i was not there there was no experience there was no experiencer because i don't remember what happened 10 years ago exactly that will be very very illogical to say that simply because i forgot i was not there it is illogical but people say the same thing 
for the last night that i forgot what happened last night i was sleeping and so i was not there i changed the experience or changed so here the ex- change of experience or states of the mind is mistaken for uh, change of experience sir and somehow it is assumed that it completely goes away the belief here is that uh, i am dependent on the memory or any mental state or any other event that happens in this body mind so fortunately there are ways to stay alert and aware in the sleep and uh, at that time if you can do it even for 2 uh, minutes and get up with the memory of being asleep with the experiencer and that clears all the doubts number 6 how can i experience myself if not through the senses will that experience happen in a subtle state so the student has heard that uh, in the experiencer cannot be grasped by senses it is not an object of senses gross senses so immediately people assume that probably it is possible to experience myself my essence through some other sense magical sense sixth sense seventh sense or some other exotic mysterious state of mind a paranormal metaphysical event will cause the experience of myself so i have a bad news that it will never happen because these five senses are not really special you can imagine other senses probably there are yes but uh, since the experiencer is completely non physical non mental in not an experience of any kind it will not happen through any kind of senses or in any kind of state if you can experience something you can immediately conclude that it is not me because i am not any experience you can immediately cross question here that who is it that is experiencing that strange experience of which i am calling as myself who knows what people imagine but probably they will imagine ball of light strange sounds or something completely imaginary the question is who is watching it who is getting that experience and obviously it will not last it is gone even if it happened but you are still there you are here watching that experience coming and going of what you believe to be yourself but the actual you is simply witnessing this kind of strange experience so the belief here is that i am probably some kind of special experience not something which can be grasped by senses but it is extraordinary experience and i'll get it some day if i meditate hard enough or i take drugs or i hit my head with a hammer probably the experiencer will materialize in front of me so there is a lot of ignorance here and the experiencer or the self is not really understood nothing was realized so you can go back to the screen metaphor that the expectation here is that under special circumstances the screen itself will appear on the screen remember you are the screen and uh, every experience that appears on the screen is uh, impermanent illusion which is not you not your essence so the expectation here is that the screen itself will appear on the on the screen that is completely imaginary idea whatever will appear on the screen will be false it will be a picture of some kind and it will go away the reality which is the screen is always there so very funny belief here but i have a good news also that whatever you are watching right now whatever you are listening whatever experiences you are getting right now right here is you that is also you but not the essence your illusory form and here we are talking at the non dual level because the experiencer is the essence of the existence and the experience is the form name and form of the existence but it is existence so what are you observing existence itself and you are most welcome to call it myself so you are not a specific experience specific event or specific object you are everything so whatever you experience is you only that is the good news yes different forms all good and bad forms are you only not a specific form so unfortunately it is 
not as per your imagination either your all or your nothing and the all and nothing are the names of the same existence so those who got the realization of oneness will understand this kind of talk but hopefully the answer is clear if you can experience it it is not you question number 7 if all experiences happen to me then why don't i know the experiences of other people and this is very classic question that everybody asks in their life at least once that the experiencer is universal there is only one experiencer that is you and you are getting all the experiences and immediately there is an expectation that why am i not getting the experiences from other cities other places in the universe and uh, whatever is there in the mind of the other people and moreover i don't know what is happening in the other room you said i am omnipresent but my direct experience is uh, completely opposite i am here locked in the body and i am getting only this much experience so very valid question here there is a difference between getting the experience and knowing the experience knowing means it is being stored in some kind of memory and you can look back at it oh yes this is the experience i had if there is no memory then it appears as if the experience never happened and everybody will agree with this thing that there has to be a memory to be called knowledge otherwise it is simply experience so we distinguish between experience and knowledge they are not the same thing knowledge is something which is stored in the memory probably logically it makes sense it is meaningful an experience is simply appearance of some kind perception it may or may not be stored in the memory and the experiences appear to the experiencer and knowledge is a special kind of experience that also appears to the experiencer people have memories that is also acceptable all people all body mind creatures machines they have their local memories inside them in the brain or wherever you want to put it it's not important and so whatever was experienced through that instrument is stored in that memory that is knowledge but the experiences are not being had by people because people themselves are experiences a person is an experience it is not experiencer people do not experience anything only experiencer experiences and so even though the, their memory stores different kind of experiences the ultimate witness is the experiencer which is one which is getting the experiences of all kinds of all the memories of all the people all the creatures also there is no one else actually the experiencer does not know anything it has no knowledge and it has no ignorance why it can't know anything because it has no memory it is completely empty it's completely pure but people have memories so whenever memory is recalled it is again experienced by the same experiencer any memory and because the memories of people they store a limited amount of knowledge limited events limited experiences whatever was necessary for the survival of that uh, creature person it is limited that will be experienced as my own private experience and since one memory is apparently disconnected from the other memory of other person when this memory is experienced the other is not experienced although the one who is experiencing all these memories is one so the experiencer does not know it simply experiences and people are experiences their memories are experiences that is what is really happening so yes there is no knowledge of what is being experienced through different points of views but the experience is going to only one that is the experiencer so we must understand the meaning of experience and the meaning of knowledge what it means to know something and what it means to experience something these are technical words now you will not find the definitions of these words in dictionary it will be defined as something else but the non dual terminology or the advait terminology is very precise 
it is very clear what these words mean experience simply means that which appears so ultimately all the experience all the appearances appear to the experiencer so you can go to the screen metaphor here it will be easy to understand the screen itself has no memory but all the pictures appear on it and the screen is the experiencer you can assume like this it experiences what is appearing on itself but the characters that appear on the screen they can have memory for a time being they are impermanent whatever happens around them gets impressed in their memory whenever a memory is experienced whatever is the content of that memory will be experienced and that will be limited and that will give an appearance that to this creature that i know i can experience only this much not something which is happening in the other part of the screen or there are other characters in the screen i cannot access what is in their memory what is in their minds what are they thinking what are they feeling because apparently they are disconnected from each other but ultimately everything is appearing to the same screen so there are differences in the individual memories the contents of the individual memory are different but uh, the essence of all the people all the individuals is the same to which these experiences appear it is very natural to assume that uh, that simply means that the experiencers are also different but simply the memories are different that gives us an illusion that the experiencers are different the experiences are different yes so obviously you don't know what is in other room what is in other city what is there in the other mind because the memories are different you know only that which is in your memory only that much can be called knowledge and whenever the experience of that knowledge happens only that much is experienced and the experiencer knows nothing it is witnessing all the appearances so you can say the memories are different they are isolated somehow or they appear to be isolated probably they are not isolated so you can take an example of your own memory many of the events are now forgotten that knowledge is gone from the memory but when the memory was there the experiencer was the same same experiencer which is now a witness of other memories which are still there just because the memory that was forgotten is not being experienced does not mean that its experiencer was some, somehow different in the same way just because in the case of a person only a limited memory is experienced not the memories of other people does not mean that uh, the memories of the other people are experienced by some other experiencer hopefully it is clear knowledge stored in one place will be experienced in that place in that memory knowledge stored in other memory will be experienced in the other place and it is perfectly natural it is perfectly as it should be if the memory of the other person is somehow experienced in the first person where the first person is then that can be called magic because that is completely unnatural it is impossible mostly it is possible only if the memories are connected somehow then the experience will be of both the memories and the experience will be somewhat strange and if many memories are connected at the same place then the experiencer will experience all of them and it will be a chaos it will be simply jumble of events which will be completely meaningless so it is good that we don't experience all the knowledge of other people remember knowledge means whatever is stored in their memories and we don't experience all the places and all the planets of the whole universe because if that happened this will produce a meaningless kind of experience and probably the that creature will die in few minutes because if 100 people are hungry that creature will think that i am 100 times hungry and it won't know who is eating who is not eating because all these experiences will be mixed it will not know where to go which is my house and where am i so all the places will be perceived at the at the same time so the life is not possible life is possible only because there is this apparent isolation of the individual 
Mm-hmm. The individual is a very strange word because it means not divisible. But fact is exactly opposite. That the individual is an island. It is a division out of the whole. And the whole is the experiencer. So probably some people will say, no, I don't want to know everything in the universe or memories of everybody. Just show me the memories of another person. And that will convince me that uh, it is the same experiencer. Although it is completely illogical to think like this, but that can be arranged somehow. Who knows magically? Because sometimes we will get the thoughts of other people. Sometimes they can see other places sitting here. That is called magic. But uh, even if that happens, the basic knowledge will remain the same. That I am not any of these experiences. Even though it is a strange event that I can see from the eyes of the other person, something like this. But still, I am not these experiences. I am the one who is getting the experiences to which all the experiences appear. Even though a different kind of memory is being formed, a different or more knowledge is being stored, still the experiencer of the knowledge is same. So nothing changes. You get exactly the same knowledge even if you are getting a limited experience. The basic knowledge will remain the same. First error here is assuming that people are experiencing something. No, they are not. They are experiences. They are illusory forms that appear in the existence. The existence is the experiencer. Another assumption mistake is that I need to have all the experiences to prove that there is only one experiencer. No, it will not prove anything. It will prove only that this creature is somewhat strange and special creature which can store experiences from many, many points of views in one memory. That much will be proven. Or technically, a more accurate way of saying it is that it proves the universality of the mind also. Then there is only one mind. It is somewhat true, but it is beyond our uh, subject at this time. Normally, creature is limited, has a limited knowledge, limited memory. That is good for its survival. It gets only that much which is needed for survival. It stores only that much. It knows only that much which is required for survival. So it does not matter what is known. It is still possible to get the basic knowledge. The essential knowledge. It is still possible to know the oneness or unity of the experiencer. There are not many experiencers can be known even with a limited memory, limitations of the creature. If the limitations are removed, same knowledge happens. Nothing extra will be proven. Something can be proven about uh, the falseness of the limitations, not about the unity of the experiencer. So why is this assumption there? Why is there this belief? Because the experiencer is thought of as a person. That the experiencer is limited and uh, dependent on the person because the person is limited. So experiencer is simply taken as a name, another name for the person. Now I am not this body-mind but I am the experiencer but I am the person, a different kind of person without any form. And because there are other people, other creatures there. Just like I have my own experiencer, personal experiencer, they also have their own personal experiencers. So somehow nothing was understood here. Remember all the pictures on the screen have the same screen behind them. It is not that they are having their own different screens. So the experiencer must not be understood as an entity that belongs to you. The truth is there is no person. The truth is, whatever you think I am is not an entity. It is not there. It is very simple. Then whatever is, is already universal. There are no divisions in it. There are no sections in the experiencer. Because the divisions mean that they are being experienced. You will be able to tell, look, this experiencer ends here. And the other experiencer of the other person starts there. If you can see it like this, if you can feel it or know it by sixth sense or seventh sense, whatever, that will become an experience. It will not remain in the category of experiencer. So if a boundary is seen, it is not me. It is not mine. It does not belong to the experiencer. 
So that much can be known. You see, probably it is impossible to know what other people are thinking or what is happening in the other room or in other city. But fortunately, it is possible to know that I am universal. I am only one. That which sees everything is one. That is the essential knowledge. So we'll continue with more questions in the next episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening.